And the cross is an invitation to you and to me to come into the household of God and to praise His name. And to know that not because of our acts or our wishes for what we do, that we have salvation. But because of the cross and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. And we have the opportunity to become one with God and enter into His kingdom. Jesus Christ came to this world, as we heard in the other gospel passages, not to judge the world, but to save it. Too often we think that by doing things of ritual and expressions of faith, that we will achieve salvation. And I tell you what, and I tell you this, that no matter what you do, no matter what you might attempt to achieve, unless you have trust and faith and true belief in Jesus Christ, you will go nowhere. For Jesus Christ is the answer to the problems of the world. He is the means of salvation. His word is truth. And we come here to glorify His name. You, my beloved spiritual children of this time, must gather in unity of faith and oneness of heart and mind. And you must stand firm in the tradition of the church and in the truth of Jesus Christ because the world will push you one way and we must hold strong to what we believe. And our message is that simple cross. Have you ever looked at the bishop's staff and wondered why it's shaped like this? There is a tradition that says that the cross stands here between the two serpents or the two dragons to remind us of Moses and the people of Israel in the desert. But there is another tradition that says that this is the truth, the message of the world, the message of Jesus Christ. It is the cross of salvation and the serpents, the evil one, that which is not true and blasphemous, attempts to devour that cross and to destroy it. But as the bishop stands with his staff, with that cross, you must also stand firm in your faith. And you must teach your children that which has been given to you. Those of you who are over the age of 40, like myself, will probably not leave the church. But there is a chance that your children might leave the church. And that is because we haven't given them Jesus Christ. Give to your children Christ the Merciful, Christ the Holy One, Christ who loves humanity, Christ the Philanthropist, Christ the Gentle, Christ the Good Shepherd. And teach your children what is true, especially according to the message of the cross, so they might also be worthy of the kingdom of God through His grace and His love. And they shall find righteousness through the message of the cross in our Savior Jesus Christ. There was at least one person who came to communion whose name was Stavros. I don't know him, but it was your name day the other day. To you I say, Kronya Pola. I don't know where he is in the congregation. But we have one of Stavros. And we must remember these feasts and celebrate not only the Feast of the Cross, the Stavron, but also our eternal feast, the Feast of our families, the Feast of the community, because as Christians we're called to celebrate in life. I had a very dear German friend whose name was Ulla. She wasn't Orthodox, she was Catholic, she was a doctor. And she always said, life is too short to be miserable. And life is too short to be miserable. Because Jesus Christ is joy. And Jesus Christ is happiness. Above all, though, Jesus Christ is love. He is forgiveness. He is goodness. And He came to save our world. And through Him, and in Him, and with Him, May we find peace of heart and mind, but most of all, may we find salvation and be one with Him in the kingdom of God.
σας κούρασα από το πρωί με την Ιεροψαφική να σας έρθει ο Θεός καλά και εσείς και όλος ο κόσμος να προσφέρετε ό,τι έχει ο καθένας δυνατό εις ο Χριστό με αγάπη, με ταπεινοφροσύνη αλλά πάνω απ' όλα με πίστη, με ελπίδα και αγάπη και την σοφία που δίνει ο Θεός ως ήταν η Αγία και οι τρεις χώρες αυτής. Χρόνια σας πολλά. I wish to thank Father Mark for his patience with me, but I also wish to thank Father John Beer, who came from Aberdeen, which is only about three hours away, Father John, two and a half. It's not so far. Because Father Nifa brought me on the train at 6 a.m. yesterday. But it was a joy and a pleasure to celebrate with the clergy here with His Grace Bishop Raphael the Shepherd of Scotland. And you see, we want to make the people here and throughout the United Kingdom know that we are here as the people of God and we are here to contribute to the world and society. Just as business, Deacon Yohan came, Yohan is to serve with us to show the unity of the faith and to reclaim the Christian lands and to teach the truth. It is for that reason that I wear this epibonatio, given to me by Father Nephon, which has Saint Cuthbert and Saint Patrick on it, Orthodox saints of these holy lands. And may we, through their prayers, find peace and happiness in these lands, preach the faith of Jesus Christ. I also wish to express my gratitude, I would say, to a new friend, and that is Ebrifiki Stam, whom I met yesterday face to face, even though I met her through Zoom in the past, her and her family for their compassion and their love, and may her parents find peace and eternal rest in God's kingdom. I think there is lunch afterward? I don't know. There's something in the hallway. And you know, food is necessary. Because food brings people together. My heart is worse than my bite. Which means don't be afraid to come up to me and speak to me. Humility in that case is a very bad thing. Come up to me and approach me. Speak to me and tell me who you are. I am your archbishop, and you are my children. I am your shepherd, and you are my flock. Some of you who know me know that I speak several languages. Some of you I see not only here, but in Constantinople by surprise. Some of your children appear on the Zoom sessions, as do you, but I need to know you. And when God allows in his love and mercy, I will be with you again. Thank you for your patience and your love, and I look forward not only to a cup of coffee, but a piece of cheesecake. <laughs> That's a sort of a private joke. <laughs> one or two words to thank uh, from the bottom of my heart and the heart of all of you here uh, who have come not only from Glasgow but also from some more distant places to be here for this very historic day for our community. I have to thank Archbishop Nikitas for coming such a long way uh, because the journey indeed is very long and his burden to look after all the parishes of this country is a very, very heavy one. And the proportions of the heaviness of his burden is the degree of our gratitude to him for everything that he does for us, for all the blessings that accrue to us through his prayer, through his, through the cross which he bears for us. He is truly like all bishops, a living example of what it is to take up one's cross and follow Christ. And we also thank you for the gift of our Bishop Raphael to be with us uh, in my head in Edinburgh so that we can have the grace of the Episcopal nearer to us than in our heart. But we thank you very much, Your Eminence, for coming here. Great and unique joy for us. And we wish you a long safe journey back, and we hope to see you again in the next one. As is
is the practice you take the unheathen on by yourselves. I hate though to be the bearer of bad news. Bishop Raphael will be transferred tomorrow and he will be leaving Scotland. It's a bad joke. <laughs> God keep you all well.